Uh, so what did you do last week in May? Oh, I had a great time. I went to karaoke bar and sat with some friends on Saturday. That's unlike fun. Did you go look it? No, we didn't. We went to that new place, downtown. How about you? Did you go to anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stayed home and studied, studied for today's Spanish test. Oh, Spanish test is today. I forgot all about that. Don't worry. You always get a, you will always get an A. Now, with the compañeros. I think Humberto. Excellent, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am so sorry. I don't know why Zoom kicked me out. No sé por qué me sacó Zoom. But I am back. So let's see. It was excellent, Basilia and Reinaldo. And let's see, who else did it? ¿Qué más lo hizo? Katia and Humberto, right? Yeah. Mario. Mario and? Linda. Linda. Linda, perfect. What about Joselino? Joselino and Herling, can you do it, please? Okay. So, what did you do last weekend, Meg? Oh, I had a great time. I went to karaoke bar and sang with some friends on Saturdays. Jose. <clears throat> that sounds like fun. Did you go to look, look it? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't. I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just I just stayed home and studied for today's Spanish test. Or oh, Spanish test is today. I forgot all about that. Don't worry, you always get an A. Thanks. Sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad, I'm so sorry. It was excellent. You always get an A. Perfect. Now let's see, let's see, let's see. Karen and Daniel, please. Daniel, are you ready? Oh. I think we're having problems, Daniel, with the audio. Creo que tenemos problemas con el micrófono. Yeah, because I cannot hear you at all. I'm sorry, Daniel. So, Karen and Katia, please. Okay. Katia Monterrosa? So, Karen, oh, I'm sorry, Katia, you did it already. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my bad, my bad. Uh, Karen and Elizabeth Lopez, please. Karen, you are going to start. Yeah. Okay. So, what did you do last weekend, Mike? Oh, I had a very high. I went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends on Saturday. That sounds like fun. Did you go to Lucky's? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. Downtown. How are, downtown. Down, downtown. How, how, are, how about you? How about you? Did you go anywhere? anywhere? Anywhere. No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stay home and study it for today's Spanish test. Our Spanish test is today. I for, forgot all about that. 
Don't worry, you always get an A. You always get an A, get an A. Okay. Okay, there's something that I would like to, 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 to explain to you guys before we continue. Antes de que continuemos. There's something with the pronunciation that you need to be aware. I got la pronunciation que debemos de comprender. Look in the chat. Look in the chat. Get an. Okay. If we have a word that finishes with T, si tenemos una palabra que termina con T, and next word starts with a vowel, y la próxima palabra inicia con una vocal, we get them together. Okay? We put them together with the sound, la juntamos, unimos, when we speak, and the T, we pronounce it as an R. Y la T la vamos a pronunciar como una R. So, get an, get an A, get an A. Listen. Get an A. Another example of that in the same conversation. We have this one. Look at this one. What about? But when we are speaking, we don't say what about you. We say what about you? What about you? Listen to me. What about you? You listen? I'm not pronouncing a T. I am pronouncing an R. No pronuncio una T, pronuncio una R. What about you? Get an A. Okay? Is it clear? Yes? yes? Yes. Okay, let me see. There's something else that I identify. Mm -hmm. Just give me a second. Okay, no. It's okay. Now, the verbs in past. Before we go to, to my explanation. Sure. Yes, mister? In a, in a other one, they say, I forgot all. I forgot. Sería, I forgot all. I forgot. I forgot. In this case, no. I forgot all about that. Okay. It's just that if you say, I forgot pensé, all. I forgot all. I forgot all about that. Yes, you can do it like that. You can say, I forgot all about that. You can say it like that. I forgot all about that. Okay. Okay, depending in this case, it could be, I forgot all about that, or it could be, I forgot all about that, but it depends if you want to emphasize the forgot. Dependerá de si usted quiere enfatizar el hecho de que olvidó. Okay? okay. If you are just saying, okay. ah, usted me olvidó, you just say it, I forgot all about that. But it's just that that sound, in that sentence, specifically for some of you, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Solo que en esa oración en específico, para algunos de ustedes quizás se vuelve un poquito complicado. I mean, in my case, it's no problem. I can say, like, I forgot all about that. But for some of you, I mean, it will need more practice. But it's okay. If you can do it, even better. Quizás a algunos les cueste un poquito y necesitan un poquito más de práctica. Pero si lo pueden hacer, it's better yet. Aún mejor. Is there any other question? Hay otra preguntita? No? Okay, now I want to point out something that I also check out. I was checking my 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 notes from yesterday. Revisaba mis anotaciones de ayer. And there's something else that I need to 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 explain, to clarify before we continue. Hay otra cuestión del speaking que quiero aclarar. Let me check it. We are going to do it like this. Okay. It's like this, guys. Look. Um, okay. How do you pronounce this word? ¿Cómo pronunciamos esta palabra? That's an article, el artículo. That. That. Okay. Now, if you have it before a consonant, like in the case of the car, you can say the car, or you can say the car. You can say the, or you can say the. Okay? Now, look at this one. Okay. 
In this case, it is before a vowel sound. En este caso está antes de un sonido vocal. In this case, it's not the apple. It's not the apple. In this case, it's the apple. D. D. Okay. Before a vowel sound, this sound is D. Antes de un sonido vocal, el artículo se pronuncia D. Okay. So in this case, it's the car or the car. And in this case, it's the apple. Okay. The ant. The student. Okay. Okay. Is it clear, guys? ¿Se entiende? Oh, so, so. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry that, but I have it from yesterday and I don't want you to continue making the same mistake. Y no quiero que continuemos con, con el mismo error, okay? It's better if we correct it right now. Okay, let's continue. Let me see. Okay, we go to the simple pass video. Welcome back. So now it's time to study past tense. For us to succeed learning it, we need to learn verbs in simple past. We'll teach you how to make questions and how to answer in both affirmative and negative form. Please pay attention. Simple past. Did you work on Saturday? Yes, I did. I worked all day. No, I didn't. I didn't work at all. Did you go anywhere last weekend? Yes, I did. I went to the movies. No, I didn't. I didn't go anywhere. What did Rick do on Saturday? He stayed home and studied for a test. How did Meg spend her weekend? She went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends. Let's talk about questions in simple past. Did you realize the auxiliary we used? Did. We use auxiliary did for questions and short answers, positive and negative. Did you realize what happened to the question after we used did? See the next example. Did you go to the beach? Did he break the window? In each question, the verb is used in simple present because we use did. It is not correct to say, did you went to the beach? Did he broke the window? So remember, every time you ask a question in simple past, you need to use the auxiliary did and the main verb goes back to present. For short answers in affirmative and negative in simple past, we must use did within the answer as we saw on the chart. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just that another screen appeared on my screen. And I'm fixing it right now. Here we go. My deepest apologies, guys. Mis más sinceras disculpas. Today my computer got crazy or the internet got crazy. One of both. No sé si la computadora o el internet se me volvió loco este día. I'm so sorry. Take a look at the following statements. They went to the park last weekend. I woke up late this morning. She came late to class. I suggest for you to study and learn verbs in simple past for you to express past activities and experiences. Okay. That's the explanation from the video. Esa es la explicación del video. Let's see. At this time, Ira, if I'm not mistaken, you already learned a little bit about Simple past, right? Ustedes ya vieron un poquito del pasado simple. Yes? And we remember, first of all, one of the most important things that we have to remember about simple past is that simple past is used to express finished actions. Okay? 
when we are talking about verbs, when we are like getting into the grammar, this is not a grammar course, so I'm not going to get that much into the grammar. Este no es un curso gramatical, no voy a meter mucho en la gramática. But something that we must remember all the time is the idea that a tense help us to express. Es importante que reconozcamos la idea que un tiempo verbal nos permite expresar. Simple past is used to express an action that is finished, okay? So remember that simple past is used for finished actions. Why am I saying it like this? Porque se lo digo así. Oh, because when we are talking about past, there are actions that started in the, in the past that still continue, okay? Actions that happened in the past before another action happened. Acciones que comenzaron en el pasado y aún continúan. Otras que sucedieron en el pasado antes que algo más en el pasado. And those are different tenses. Y esos son tiempos verbales. Don't worry. In English is easier than in Spanish. Okay? No se preocupen que en inglés es mucho más fácil que en español. Verb tenses in English are less than in Spanish. Los tiempos verbales en inglés son menos que en español. So it's going to be easy. But the idea, the idea is this. Simple past, a finished action. Now, if you remember from previous classes, from previous modules, if you recuerdan de modules anteriores, simple past express uh, regular verbs, ed, right? Verbos regulares are those that for making the simple past we just add ed. Para formar el pasado simple solo le agregamos ed. That's it, no? Uh, irregular verbs, well. You have to learn them by heart. Los verbos irregulares, tenemos que aprenderlos by heart. Oops, I'm sorry, that word is miswritten. By heart. De corazón, no, it's... Uh, if you say by heart, you're saying de memoria, okay? That expression means de memoria. Or like my grandpa used to say, O como decía mi abuelito, hay que guayabiárselo. So we must learn them. That's the only way. That's with the regular verbs. In this class, we are focused more in how to make questions in simple past. En esta clase nos enfocamos más a cómo hacer preguntas. Okay? But uh, let me share with you a short presentation. Vamos a ver una presentación muy corta. That is going to help us get the, the hang of it. Okay. Let's see. Simple past tense. Okay. The part one was the video. The part two is this. Okay, positive sentences or affirmative sentences. The structure, we got the subject. After the subject, we got the main verb. Okay, like the subject can be, uh, in this case, we have pronouns. It could be I, you, he, she, or a noun, okay? The main verb in simple past. Worked, flunked. She worked very hard today. You flunked the exam. This is clear for you, right? Questions here? Preguntas acá? No questions? Okay, let's go to next slide. Excellent. Okay, in this one, we have affirmative, we have negative, and we have interrogative. If you want, if you want, uh, hold on just a second. Excellent. If you want, I can send you a picture of this. Si gustan, les mando una imagen de esta una fotografía de esta imagen. Ok. So you can have it. Just give me a second. There you go. Ok. So, for the negative, we have here, look. For the negative, we have the subject, the auxiliary, then we have the not, then we have dance, work, the verb, but look at the verb. The verb in negative is in the simple base form. Okay, aquí está en su forma base. Why? Because we got the auxiliary, did. 
She did not dance. We did not work. It's not in, the verb is not written in past, but it's understood in past. El verbo no se escribe en pasado, pero se entiende en pasado. Why? Because of the auxiliary. In the interrogative, did you go to London? Did they work at home? You see? Did you go to London? Did they work at home? Questions here? Preguntas acá? Eh, teacher, in yes. affirmative, no hay auxiliary. No, in affirmative, there's not an auxiliary because we have the verb in past. El pasado del verbo en la forma afirmativa se expresa en el verbo. In the negative and interrogative, you express it by the auxiliary. En la forma negativa e interrogativa lo expresa con el auxiliar. Ok, but that's just for negative and interrogative. Pero solo es para negativo e en interrogativo. In the affirmative, el verbo tiene una forma pasado. Ok, stayed, worked. Look, ve acá. Vea la interrogative, la última sentence. Did they work? Did they work at home? ¿Trabajaron en casa? The verb is in past. Ok. The same as here. You worked very hard. El verbo está en pasado. But here, the verb is understood in past. Aquí se entiende que está en pasado. Why? Because of the auxiliary. Here, because the verb is already in past. Okay, let's continue. The auxiliary. The auxiliary is conjugated in the past simple. And it's invariable. Deal. The main base is invariable in base form. Okay, for negative sentences, we insert not between the auxiliary verb and the main verb. For question sentences, we exchange the subject and the auxiliary verb. The idea is this. Look. La idea es esta. When we have... A question, we use the verb in the base form. Si tenemos una pregunta, el verbo en su forma base. The auxiliary is the one that tells us the sentence is in past. Okay? Let's explain it in a different way. Vamos a explicarlo de una manera diferente. I know that it must be kind of confusing for you. Sé que se vuelve un poquito confuso. Ok, we will use the old one. Vamos a usar la vieja confiable. We are going to use a board. Ok. Hold on. Let's see. Perfect. Ok. We have here. Look. I played soccer yesterday. This is simple past tense. In simple past tense, this structure says that I have a subject plus, I'm sorry, plus a verb and the verb, look, is in past. And I have I'm sorry, plus a complement, as simple as this, okay? So I have this subject, I have the verb in past, and I have the complement. Now, something that we must remember is that the verb is in past because in this case, it's a regular verb and it got the ed. In this case, this complement is all this. That's a sentence in what? I explained it to you that this is an affirmative sentence, right? Esta es una oración afirmativa, okay? This is an affirmative sentence, but Remember, when we are speaking, we got three different types of sentences. Cuando hablamos, tenemos tres oraciones, tres tipos de oraciones distintos. That's the affirmative. But then we have also 
the negative sentence. Now, negative sentences. Okay, we are going to do something here. The same sentence. Vamos a trabajar con la misma oración. Look, I did not play soccer yesterday. Okay, in this case, it's a negative sentence. But let's identify the elements. The basic structures tells me, la estructura básica me dice, that I need. The first thing I need is a subject. Primero que necesito es a subject. Plus the auxiliary. What is the auxiliary for the simple past? Is did. El auxiliar es did. It will never change. Nunca cambiará. After the auxiliary did, what do I have? As it is a negative sentence, I have not. Plus the verb. Now look at the verb. The verb is in the base form. El verbo está en su forma base. And after the verb in the base form, I have the complement. Okay, now let's mark the elements. Marquemos los elementos. Subject, the auxiliary did. We got not. We got the verb in the base form. And then we have the complement. And this is a negative sentence. Now, remember. In this case, the base in the best form, in the base form, the verb in the base form. When we say that the verb is in the base form, it means the infinitive without the two. Ese también le pueden encontrar como el infinitivo sin el two. That's the verb in the base form. Now look, the auxiliary is here, did, but the verb is in present, we can say it. Podríamos decir que el verbo está en presente. So, we understand that the sentence, that the idea is in past because of did here. Entendemos que la idea está en pasado por el did. In the affirmative, the verb has its own form. En la forma afirmativa, el verbo tiene su forma propia. And that's why for the interrogative form, that we are going to do it right here, we are going to divide the board. Vamos a dividir esto. Okay. Then we have the interrogative form. The interrogative form is quite easy. La forma interrogativa es muy fácil. Why? Look, the interrogative form, the same sentence. Did I, I'm sorry, did I play soccer yesterday and the question mark you know that the in questions in english we just use the the question mark at the end now the structure what is the basic structure for this ¿Cuál es la estructura básica para la forma interrogativa? pretty simple we have the auxiliary after the auxiliary we got the subject then we have the verb, the verb again in the base form. The nuevo el verbo en su forma base. Why? Because we still got an auxiliary. The base form plus complement plus question mark. And the structure goes like this. Remember, auxiliary, subject, verb in the base form. complement and question mark. And this is an interrogative sentence. 
¿ok? Now, up to here. Preguntas hasta acá. Teacher. Yes, mister. Eh, aquí, este, digamos, no se ocupa en este el do. Por lo menos si yo le quisiera preguntar algo, oh, el do okay. sustituye el do. Exactly that. Actually, actually there's something very interesting. Did, okay, look, I'm going to have it here so you can check it. We have the verbs in present and then, and then we have verbs in past. Look, do is the verb in present and the past of do is did. El auxiliar para el presente es do. Right? Okay. Do, it's also a verb. Este es un verbo realmente. And the past form of the verb do is did. Y la forma pasada del verbo do is did. It's actually the same auxiliary. Realmente es el mismo auxiliar, solo que en su forma pasada. Okay? I'm sorry, I, I don't quite hear you. No le escucho bien. ¿Puedo salirme de acá? Sí. I, I send you the picture. Les envío una picture de esto. Les envío el grupo de WhatsApp. Una picture. Ok. Who was asking me about another auxiliary? ¿Quién me preguntaba de otro auxiliar? Or another verb? Uh, teacher. Yes. Uh, tenía, tenía una duda y tenía que ver, por ejemplo, con el auxiliar do, que en el tema, eh, en el caso del she, he, it, es el does, ¿verdad? Ok. En este caso, el did aplica para Hablo todos them. los sujetos. Yes, exactly. It doesn't change. It never changes. Okay. Nunca cambia. O sea, simple, eh, en este caso, el auxiliar es el que me llevaría al pasado simple. Todos los verbos, digamos así, en todos los sujetos. Yes, para forma negativa en interrogativo. Ok. Interrogativo. Ok. Ok, can, yes. go. Karen, can and go. Can, actually, it's a modal verb. El verbo can es un verbo de modo. I don't know if you have seen the modal verbs. No recuerdo si vieron los modal verbs. Can, could, should, would, could. No? no. Okay, lo verán más adelante entonces. Teacher. Pre intermediate to yes, Katia. Y si usted pregunta, por ejemplo, ella, oh, ella no hizo la tarea. In negative. Uh, a negative question. Está. Did. Ah, sí. Did y luego, she... do. Didn't, didn't she do the homework? Uh, siempre, sí. Igual en la interrogativa se utiliza yes. el sí. Uh -huh. De forma baja. Ok, look. I don't know how did they explain it to you. No sé cómo les explicaron ustedes. But I'm going to do something that it's... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to switch into Spanish just for a second. Voy a cambiar al español solo un momento. ¿Puedo? Do you agree? Okay. Simple. Yes. Simple, simple, simple. En el presente simple utilizamos el do como no auxiliar, ¿verdad? A ver, ¿qué significa el do como auxiliar para el presente? Nada. Nada. No se complique la vida queriendo saber qué significa. Lo único que nos dice a nosotros es que la oración, el verbo principal de la oración, eh, que el verbo principal de la oración está en presente. ¿Por qué lo ponemos entonces? Decimos nosotros. Ah, porque en pasado es la misma oración. Ok, look at me. Vean. I do not work hard. Yo no trabajo duro. I did not work hard. Si le quito el auxiliar, quedo igual. ¿Qué me diferencia a mí del presente y del pasado? I do not work hard. I did not work hard. Just the auxiliary, right? Solo el auxiliar es el que nos hace la diferencia. I do not work hard. She did not work hard. Okay. Uh, 
let's see, Reinaldo, 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 en el correo no le cayó el, el enlace para unirse. No, no, no. Lo que pasa es que tengo problemas con el correo. Ok, Reinaldo, I'm sorry, I'm going to do something. Puedo, puedo cambiar el correo. Uh, no, y hay un problema porque a ese correo le van a mandar toda la información. Okay. La evaluación. Ok, just give me a second. Este, Tiene mi número, ¿verdad, Reinaldo? Uh, uh, no lo recuerdo. Este, se lo voy a mandar en un momento. Necesita comunicarse conmigo el día de mañana para que hablemos con la gente de soporte, ver cómo me le pueden ayudar. Ok, gracias. Ok, perfecto. Ok, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, guys. So, entonces, cuando estoy en pasado, entre el presente y el pasado, para la forma negativa e interrogativa, estructuralmente, la única diferencia es el auxiliar. Do, did. Simple. As simple as that. Así de simple. The only difference between present and past for negative and interrogative is the auxiliary. Just the auxiliary. Solo el auxiliar. It's just in the affirmative that we use the verbs in past. Solo es en la afirmativa que utilizamos el verbo en pasado. But in negative and interrogative, the auxiliary did for all the subjects. El did para todos los sujetos. ¿Ok? Hasta ahí, hasta ahí. No vamos a avanzar más este día. Don't worry. Todavía tenemos el día de mañana para meternos de lleno a esto. Hasta ahí, ¿cómo vamos? Si sí, no, mire, profe, busque otra manera de explicarme que no entendí. Come on, guys, it's your class, tell me. It's clear. No, yo estoy entendiendo más que anteriormente. <laughs> ok, ok, ok. Excellent, excellent. Oh, Reinaldo, Vilma nos ayudó ahí con el grupo de WhatsApp. Thank you, Vilma. Gracias, Vilma. Okay. ok, let's see. Vale, entonces, perdonen. Recordemos, recapitulemos. Simple pass, el pasado simple. Se utiliza para una acción finished. Finished action. Right? Structurally. Le, me meto a explicar la estructura porque tengo adultos acá. Y le, bueno, quienes trabajamos en el área me entenderán. Eh, Dentro del proceso del desarrollo cognitivo, el aprendizaje, pues nosotros pensamos ya de esa manera, estructurado. A nosotros toda la vida nos preguntamos el por qué. Tenemos que entender el por qué para que el, no sé si se usa la palabra en español, se internalice el conocimiento. O sea, nosotros necesitamos la estructura para entenderlo, para que nuestra mente lo procese como algo lógico. ¿Ok? Por eso les pongo la estructura. Although this is not like a course focus a lot in grammar. A pesar que este curso no es muy enfocado a la gramática. Okay. And I'm sorry for that. Y pido disculpas por esto. Because I know that this class can be kind of tedious. Sé que esta clase es un poquito tediosa. Y sé que cuando comenzamos a ver gramática, we get like tired. We get like sleepy. Nos da un poquito de sueño. No acordamos del cansancio. But... It's important. And for some of you, para algunos de ustedes, it will be easier to understand. Será más fácil de entender. Are we okay up to here? ¿Vamos bien hasta acá? Yes? Okay. Yes, teacher. Yes. Tomorrow, for tomorrow, we are going to continue working, working with simple past. Mañana vamos a trabajar de nuevo con simple past with the verb be. Con el verbo ser estar. That's easier. Eso es todavía más fácil. Okay? And... We are going to see, again, the structure. De nuevo nos meteremos a la estructura. And we are going to see how to apply the WH question. Y vamos a ver cómo aplicar las WH question, las information questions. You know them, right? Las conocemos. What, where, when, who, why, qué, quién, cómo, cuándo, dónde, por qué. Si nos acordamos de ella, ¿verdad? And I will give you an advance. Le doy un avance. Con las WH question, la estructura es... Veamos, vamos a poner aquí algo. Has been kind of... Crazy, I am really grateful to you for your patience. Les agradezco mucho su paciencia. Eh, please be tomorrow in my class. Don't let me alone. No me dejen solo mañana. Lo espero. We need to do a lot of stuff. 
tenemos mucho que hacer. And tomorrow you are going to practice more. Okay. Thank you very much. I see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Okay, and...